the zero property for exponents is probably the easiest property, okay? Because any time we have an exponent raised to the zero power, it is always going to be one, no matter what, okay? And actually ends up being a common mistake people make because they tend to think that anything raised to the zero power would just be zero, okay? But that's not the case. If we have eight raised to the zero power, that's gonna be one. If we have 547 raised to the zero power, that will always be one as well. Okay, so just kind of keep in the back of your mind, okay, that when we have a zero exponent, it's not gonna be zero, okay, it's gonna be one. Okay, you can make up any examples that you want, four to the zero power equals one, okay, um, 6,798 to the zero power is gonna be one. One million to the zero power will be one. Okay, let's go on to the negative property for exponents. If you don't have this written down in your exponent booklet under the definition side, okay, please write that down in there. Okay, so what the negative property says is that if we have a negative exponent, in order to change that to a positive, we're going to move it to either the numerator or the denominator depending on where that negative lies. Okay, so for this first example that I'm going to give you, we have 4 to the negative second power. Okay, and what the directions will say is they want you to write it as a positive exponent. Okay, well, we know if we don't have our fraction bar there, then it's always is in the numerator. Okay, so 4 to the negative second power, that's in the numerator. So if I want to change that to a positive, I'm going to put it into the denominator, and that 2 ends up being a positive exponent. Okay, so then I have 1 over 4 to the second power as my answer. Okay, same thing with if we were to have a negative exponent in our denominator, okay? If we have a negative exponent in our denominator, in order to make that positive, we're gonna move it up to the numerator, okay? So then it would be six to the third power positive, okay? So it doesn't matter where that negative is, okay? Whether numerator or denominator, we're just gonna move it to the opposite one and it will automatically be positive. Okay, let's do few harder ones. So let's do 4 times c times d to the negative fifth power. Okay, and the directions would say, let's write this as a positive exponent. Okay, they'll ask you to simplify to make it positive. Now, remember, if we don't, if we have a variable that doesn't have an exponent on it, it has a 1 there. Okay, and one's positive. So we don't have to move our four or our C because they both have those positive exponents there. The only one that we have to change is D to the negative fifth power. Okay, and to make that positive, we're gonna move it below into the denominator to make it positive. So notice we didn't have to move everything. Okay, we only had to move the one that was negative. Okay, so this is our answer, 4c over d to the fifth power. All right, let's say I have 4x to the second power times y over z to the negative third power. Okay, and they are asking us to write this as a positive exponent. Okay, well, if we look at our numerator, all of those have positive exponents, four to the first, x to the second, and y to the first power. The only one that has a negative exponent is our z. So that's the only one I have to move. I can keep 
4 in the numerator, I can keep x to the second in the numerator and y. And then I'm just going to add z next to it. But this time my 3 is positive. All right, let's do one more. Let's say I have 10 x to the negative fourth, y to the second, over z to the negative seventh power. Okay, first thing is to look at which ones have positive exponents and which ones have negative exponents. My 10 is positive because it has that 1 there, so I'm going to keep that up in my numerator. Okay, also I notice that my y has a positive, so I'm going to also keep that in my numerator. Okay, and then I notice my x has a negative 4, so I'm going to bring that below to make that positive. And lastly, my z value has a negative 7 as its exponent, so I'm going to move that up top to make it positive. Okay, so now we have it all in positive exponents. If you have any questions, please make sure you are asking.